All right, guys, welcome to this Pal World rapid fire tips video of a list of things I wish I knew sooner when I jumped into Pal World. It would have saved me a ton of time, a ton of resources. And while I am having a ton of fun, it's always nice to be a little bit more efficient. So let's start this rapid fire tips session. The first one is when you're out exploring, even if you haven't collected a waypoint yet, it will be on your compass. You can see there up at the top, it's pointing east right here to this one. And if I come over here, if I come over here, it's locked onto that, right? So you can always use your compass to find new waypoints for fast travel that you haven't found yet. The next tip is fly around and look for eggs, just like this one right here. You'll find eggs all over the game, and this is a great way to get pals that are way above your level. So sometimes it would be really difficult to get something like this, but if you find a good egg, you take it back to your base and you incubate it, it allows you to punch above your weight class. It allows you to get pals that you wouldn't otherwise be able to get yet. So make sure you get on a mount that flies, look around for those eggs, also look around for those FGs. Okay, the next big thing is using this condenser right here. If you use this, you can come here and you can take a Fox Bark, which normally has level one kindling and you can keep combining it until it has level two kindling. Likewise, if you grab a pal that has level two kindling, you can up it to level three kindling and that will work for any of these trades in here if you want. So all you have to do is pick one and then keep adding to it until you level it up. Eventually you're gonna up its trade. Another tip is that you can slide and then use your glider to cover massive distance and do it fast. But what if you wanna get up high and you wanna do it fast? Just go ahead and climb up on your bogey ball. And there you go. Next thing to know is if you ever hear this sound, that sparkly sound, that means that there is a sparkly pals nearby and you can go catch it. Just follow the sound. Another thing to be aware of is that it's not just these ore deposits that respawn. If you find an egg out in the wild, that's going to respawn in the same place too. So be sure to check back on those egg locations, particularly if you find something nice. If you're not sure where to put your points yet, you can't go wrong with HP and weight. These are two things that you're always going to wish you had more of so that you can carry more. Beyond that, it's just going to be personal preference. I haven't put much of anything in any of those and I've never regretted it. If you ever need a light source at night, use one of the fire. They do a great job of keeping things illuminated for you. Are you about to be raided and you just can't be bothered to deal with it? Well, one thing you can do is just return to title when the raid's coming in and when you log back into the game, the raid will no longer be there. Another way to deal with that same problem is to come into your world settings. Just click your server or click your game and then choose change world settings down here at the bottom. And in here, you can customize this game to your own liking. It is a single player game for a lot of people. So there's no shame in changing some of these things like turning off raids or shortening incubation periods or getting more ore for every time you hit an ore vein, right? All of these things that can add a lot of padding to the time played, but aren't necessarily tons of fun. Feel free to come in here and adjust those values so that you get more ore and it can make the game way less grindy, something that you can pick up and play and make great progress in a little bit of time. Of course, you know, be careful not to make it too easy because you could ruin it for yourself. If you ever need to farm something that drops from pals, it's never a bad idea to up their rate right here. You can crank that to three. So every time pals spawn, now there's going to be three times as many of them there. So you can farm things like pal water really fast. You can always come back here and change it at any time if you want to bring it back to normal because running into three boss pals or three elite pals can be pretty troublesome. These are the FGs that you're looking for right here. Run around, pick these up. They're located all over the map. The best time to look for them if you want is to fly around in the sky at night. Many of the important items in the world will glow at night and it makes them really easy to find whether it's effigies, waypoints, treasure chests, right? All of these things are glowing and you'll be able to collect a ton of them really, really fast, which is great because the more effigies that you collect, the higher the chance of catching great pals later. Next tip has to do with these chests. You're going to find chests all over the place. Sometimes they're going to be red and they'll require a key to open. A lot of times an easy way to get keys is to kill humanoids in the game and they will drop keys. You can also open chests just like the one I'm opening right now 
and those can give keys and there's sometimes merchants wandering around and you can buy keys from them. The next tip has to do with your second and third bases. At level 10, you're going to unlock the ability to have a second base and then level 15, you're going to unlock the ability to have a third base. Each base can house up to 15 pals and usually it's going to be the case that when you're going to create your second base, one of the things you need a lot of is ore and that's this mineral deposits here on the right side of my screen and the next thing you're going to need a lot of after you start getting that ore is coal and that's all of these deposits on the left side of my screen here this place right here is probably the best location for your second base and in order to find it it's right here at 190 negative 35 you can see the uh, gps coordinates down here and so what you can do is just open up your map and move your crosshair until it gets to 190 and negative 34 and when you get to that point just place a marker like this and then boom you'll have a marker there and just work your way there as soon as possible probably as soon as you get a flying mount just kind of work your way up there it's a little bit of a journey from down here so you're going to probably be in this range if you're playing like most people did and then you're going to work your way up and this spot right here it's just a money spot i haven't found anything better yet this has been a great base on my other playthrough the next tip is chain building so if you go to build a structure let's say you were trying to build a defensive wall around your base or something one of the things you can do is right click instead of left click and if you right click it continues to build whatever you had selected before so that you don't have to keep going into the menu and choosing the thing that you want to build again so chain building very useful the next tip is that you can pick up your pals and throw them at a task that you want them to do likewise if you have a pal that's say good at handiwork when you're in the base you can just throw that pal down and it'll go ahead and start helping with any crafting and anything that you want to be done while you're there so your pals in your party can help out at your base as well while you're there all you have to do is throw them down the next thing i wish i knew when i started is that if we go to the pal deck here we can view more details on any of these right so this guy right here it says he's lucky and in order to find out what that means we can view more info and then we can hover over lucky and that's going to tell us what that is 15 percent work speed and 15 percent attack speed so a great trait to have on your workers likewise you can see all of your other information over here which is mostly self-explanatory you've got kindling kindling is going to help it work anything that requires fire so like when you're melting ingots right that kind of stuff planting it's going to plant the seeds Andy work is going to help you with any task at your benches so if you're crafting something there it's going to do that if it has lumbering it's going to chop down trees for you if it's got medicinal production it'll produce medicine at your medicine bench if it's got transporting then when other pals chop things down or mine things it'll run around pick them up and put them in the storage boxes for you so that you don't have to do that watering so if another pal is planting then your watering pal will go and water the seeds behind them to make sure that they grow and then generating electricity is going to be for certain things that require electricity gathering so if you've got berries and things then your gatherer will go grab them for you mining will mine the rocks unfortunately it won't mine the ore until you get to mining level two and so if you ever throw something that has the trait that you need but it's not doing it it might be because you need level two so in order to mine ore instead of just stone you're going to need mining level two i'll talk about how to make sure you get that in a moment cooling this is great for when you have a refrigerator in your base so that your food doesn't go bad your food goes bad in this game it's kind of annoying but you know there's a way to deal with it at least and then farming farming is kind of an interesting one you can throw things in here so if you throw sheep in here basically it's going to give you its wool and then you can use that to make cloth and stuff so when you see the farming one on there it means you can come in here and depending on what animal it is it might give you gold it might give you wool it might give you all sorts of things so try it out if you see that little fence icon on them now this next tip's a big one but first let me tell you about the highly anticipated next entry into the yakuza series like a dragon infinite wealth is coming to playstation xbox windows and steam on january 26th link down in the description experience one-of-a-kind combat with dynamic fast-paced rpg battles where the battlefield becomes your weapon and anything goes stop into aloe happy tours and waikiki to go for a tour and unlock new jobs jobs in infinite wealth are like classes in other rpgs allowing you to tie up bad guys with your lasso as a desperado sweep the floor with hooligans as a housekeeper or slice down foes as a samurai in this game two larger than life heroes are brought together by the hand of fate and team up to explore japan and all that hawaii has to offer this time
time around, combat is more strategic and dynamic than ever before. You can target your enemy's weaknesses and use the environment against them. Powerful area of effect attacks have never felt so good. Stack up your enemies and knock them all down. Or throw your enemies into explosive gas canisters to amp up the damage even more. If you time your attacks just right, you get rewarded with perfect attacks for massive damage. But what if you find yourself facing off against unworthy opponents? Just give them the smack down. If that's not an option, summon your poundmates, a powerful group of allies for hire with a wide range of abilities to help you in battle. So what are you waiting for? If you pre-order now, you get the Heroes Booster Pack and a special job set. Play like a dragon infinite wealth on PlayStation, Xbox, Windows, and Steam by clicking the link in the description. Massive thank you to Sega for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. Thanks so much for listening. Now let's get back to the video. One of the things you're going to need a lot of early on is blue spheres and an easy way to get those. If you get some vixens, you can put them in your base and you can assign them to this right here and then they will just poop out. Basically, they'll just poop out blue spheres over and over for you. You'll have way more than you need if you do that. And then that's going to be great when it comes to catching 10 of each, right? Because you're going to need tons of those. In the very beginning of the game, you're going to need blue spheres like a lot of them, right? Because one of the fastest ways to level in this game, probably the fastest way to level in the game right now is to catch 10 of each of the lower level pals. So the first 10 times you catch every single pal, you get massive bonus experience. You can see in your pal deck how many times you've caught each one. So capture bonus. I've got one out of 10, so I can catch this one nine more times and still get that massive bonus XP. This bonus XP scales with your level. So if you don't catch them when you're lower level, it's OK. You can catch them when you're higher level and still get that massive XP. That's still very relevant to you. And you can come in here and check how many times you've caught any one one of those things. So if we come up towards the top here, you can see complete because we've captured more than 10 of them here. And while we're in here, another good thing to be very aware of is you're going to be crafting and every once in a while, it's going to require a material. And you're like, oh man, is this an easy one to get or is it a tough one to get? Well, most of the time it's pretty easy. You just got to come here and find the one that drops it. So if you need berry seeds, oh, then, you know, you can knock out a few of these guys. If you need wool, then, you know, you can come here and knock out some lamb balls. If you need electric organs, likewise. Right. So you can come in here and see a lot of times early on, you're going to need owl fluids, for instance. And so this is one good source of them. Easy to get. Right. So anytime you have a material you need, swing by here and just take a peek in your pal deck and see what they drop. It might be that the thing you need is dropping from one of these guys. And by the way, you can get these materials, whether you catch them or whether you kill them. But if you catch them instead of kill them, you're going to get that bonus XP. Now, if you're looking for a certain type of pal so that you can kill them, catch them, or whatever you want to do with them. I'm not judging. You can come into your pal deck and you can hit the button down here for PC. It's three. So if we hit three, it's going to show us everywhere that that pal spawns. So we can go to that area and farm tons of them. No problem. And you can do this for any pal in the game that you've come across. So this is one that you definitely want to take advantage of and you can toggle day and night here. If you're working your way down the tree and you find that you need more ancient technology points to unlock the stuff on the right, those come from alphas and syndicate bosses. So you can go to these right here, like Elizabeth on the map and you can kill her and that would give you ATP, ancient technology points. Alternatively, you can go to tower bosses like this one here that you run into it early in the game and you can knock the boss out there. You can see if you've killed that boss already by hovering over it. It'll say defeated if you've already done it. And if you've already got the alphas, then there will be a check mark over them. Now, earlier we mentioned how you're going to need the green effigies and lots and lots of them. So if you come to this statue right here, this is something that you're going to put in your base. The game's going to tell you to do that and you enhance right now. You can click enhance and it's going to increase your chance to capture pals. Right, so very, very important. You're always going to want to max that out whenever you have the opportunity to do so. The next tip has to do with the incubation of eggs. So you're going to be incubating lots of eggs like this one here was incubated. And then afterwards, we'll come hold incubate, pull this one out, and it's going to tell you what you got. So all we got from this one was a fox bark. It's not particularly useful for me at this point in the game. But early on, those are great. Now, when you put an egg in here, it's going to tell you that it's either too cold or too warm. So what you can do here, it says seems very comfortable. So we've got two different little fires right next to it. And sometimes it'll tell you it's too warm. Sometimes it'll tell you it's too hot. If it's very comfortable, then it's basically just going to hatch faster. And if it's not, it's going to hatch slower. So an easy way to manage this is to just add or remove fires in this area. You can come into the build menu and then down here at the bottom, it says disassembly mode. So you click that and then you can choose the fire that you want to disassemble. Just make sure not to disassemble your house underneath and then have everything else go crashing to the bottom, right? That's not good, but you can just add and remove fires as needed to get to the right temperature. Sometimes 
sometimes adding fires won't be enough and it's still going to be a little bit uncomfortable. There's other ways to add heats that are more expensive and a little less fluid like this heater right here. So you may have to play around with those to get to the right temperature. The next tip that's really helpful is once you've got your storage containers kind of holding what you expect each one to hold, like maybe right here you want to have all of your ore so that right next to your furnace, you know, you've got your ore and you can put it in there and create your ingots, right? Real nice and easy. So you've got your chest organized. You come to these and you can press R on PC. I'm not sure what it is on console, but there is a button. So make sure to look it up and you can just press R and it's going to put all like materials. So if all these materials here are also here and I just press R, it's automatically going to know just put these in there, but nothing else. So put it boom. Now all of those are in there and I can go around to all of my containers and I can just open them up and put all the things in each one that it needs to be in. And the game will automatically sort that for me once I've started the piles myself. So it's very handy way to deal with that. In the opposite end of the spectrum, one of the things you could do is you could go up to this chest and you could hit X and X will pull everything out of it and into your inventory. Likewise, when you die and you go to pick up your corpse, you can just press X after you interact with it and it's going to pull everything into your inventory. So you don't have to manually do all one at a time or reach up and actually hit the button to pull it all out. All right, this next tip is really handy if you happen to find yourself in a boss fight that you know you're not going to win, right? So you walk into a boss fight and let's say you're unprepared, right? And you just, there's no way. You're losing, all your pals are dying and you're just going to be leaving your corpse and all your stuff back here and you don't want to do that. What you can do is just run to a safe spot real quick and then click return to title. So it'll put you into the menu screen and then you can just start the game up and it's going to set you right outside of the dungeon again. So you don't have to die. If you go in there and you're losing, you don't have to die. You can just go ahead and return to title screen and that'll work for dungeons as well. So if you find yourself way deep inside of a dungeon and you can't find your way out or you find yourself losing your fight in your dungeon, you can just get out to the beginning by opening up that same menu, return to title and log back in and it'll set you right outside the entrance. When you're exploring the map, you're going to find regions that are really hot and you're going to find regions that are really cool. And one thing to be aware of is if there's something you really want to explore maybe a hot region and there's a bunch of effigies in there or eggs you just can't quite get to it because it's too hot and it's hurting you it does cool down at night so if you don't have the heat gear yet you can go there at night and it might be okay now in the game you're going to find merchants like this all over the place and you're going to be able to spend your gold buying various materials from them some of these things are easier to buy from them than they are to farm especially if you end up with a lot of gold later on which you probably will so don't be afraid to take advantage of these and pals aren't the only thing that you can catch with your balls you can also throw your spheres at these guys to catch them you're gonna have to wound them it's pretty difficult but it is possible so if you want a merchant in your base you know go ham next tip is pals don't die in this game they just have to be revived so if your pal dies in combat all you have to do is come back to your base go to your pal box and just move your pal in there and then there will be a 10 minute timer that starts counting down and after 10 minutes he'll revive and he'll start regenerating health you you can just put him on your team and then go take a nap and he'll regenerate his health. Lots of different ways to handle that situation. Another little tip is if you're trying to get something that's a little bit out of your level, one thing you can do is get the pals to fight each other and then just capture them when they get low. Sometimes early on, you might be able to get some stuff that you wouldn't otherwise be able to get by using this trick. One thing that you might find happening to you is you're trying to get something low so that you can catch it and then boom, your daydream just goes and kills it because you have their necklace, which keeps them out all all the time. So one thing you can do is you can open up this menu here and you can say command don't attack. And then this way they won't attack for a moment while you get something that's, you know, a little below you low and then you throw your ball at it to catch it. On PC that button is four and you just hold it down and it brings this up. And that is all of the tips for this video. Many more to come in the future videos. I'm going to be doing much more advanced guides after this one to share that information as the community gets to that point in the game. So if that sounds interesting to you, be sure to hit like and subscribe for more our world guides thanks so much for watching i appreciate you guys and a massive shout out to my youtube members thanks for supporting in the big way you do if you want to become a youtube channel member be sure to click the join button below for behind the scenes footage access to a private discord channel and more if you're not sure what to watch next check out one of the videos on screen right now and i'll see you in the next video